Hello there, and welcome to another Talking With Dashing Foxy. Now, as you could tell by the title, which I think I changed the title, didn't I? Let me see if I did. Oh, okay. Uh, actually, shoot. I completely fudged up. I'll talk about that at a different time. Whoop. If you are joining me, welcome. Let me just try to share this one. Ooh, got a fur in my mouth. Let me do this. Boop, paste to Facebook. Okay, so I think we're live. We are all good. We are all up and running. Hopefully people start showing up. Okay, welcome guys. It is Friday. 9 o'clock Eastern Time on a beautiful, beautiful day. So guys, hello and welcome to Talking With Dashing Foxy. Now, uh, we're going to talk, we're, we're not going to do about the ordering fursuits. I, I was going to do a whole entire ordering fursuits and, you know, making fursuits and other things like that, but... I figured, why don't I just leave that for another episode? I got to do a little bit more research into it because I know every other fursuiter is different on ordering. So if I do or focus on one in particular fursuit maker, uh, it's not technically the same exact thing as every other fursuit maker that does it. So I'm going to wait off on the ordering fursuits. And today we're going to really be talking about designs for fursuit, how you design it, how do you make a fursona, and how do you really help yourself out if you do want a fursuit in the future. So I would, I would definitely, uh, if you're a person who's very interested in on getting a fursuit, making a fursuit design and other things, you're going to probably want to be here. Uh, so who knows? Or, you know, not. You could just go and probably find, like, hundreds of things on YouTube about how how you design a fursuit or anything like that. But who knows? Maybe you'll stay. And maybe you'll learn something here in the process of doing this. So, uh, I'm going to start out with a little bit of knowledge. Now, I know a lot of furries know all this. And they already know what a fursona is and what is that. But let's let's... Just say you you never been in a furry fandom and you do want to make a fursona and you're like what the hell is a fursona? Is that like a type of cereal or something? No. Okay, so a fursona is basically what I'm wearing right here. A fursona is your furry character. Uh, now furry characters can range from all these sorts of different ones. So you, you could be a hybrid, which is a combining of two animals, like a dog and uh, a wolf or whatever, which I don't think that's a hybrid. I always hate when people say that. Oh, I'm a combined mixture of a husky and a wolf. It's like, wait, aren't they like basically the same and they can mate in real life? So isn't it the same? Uh, well, see, a fursona can be a mix and match of things like a fox and a wolf, which is a mix and match of things, because that never really happens. Or maybe a husky and a bat. I've seen it. Uh, you, you see a lot of different ones here. Uh, then you have your typical uh, one species, which is like me. I'm an Arctic fox. Uh, you have Arctic fox. You can be a variety of different things. It really doesn't matter about the species. It's all per preferable appearance or whatever you want to call it. Or whatever you... Whatever. Uh... And excuse me, guys, if I'm not the greatest today, I'm not really feeling all that well. I'm kind of, I don't know, I think I'm touching something. Okay, but see, uh, but today we're going to we're gonna really talk about how you can create a fursona, uh, how you get it into the development stage, and if you do want a fursuit, how you get the fursuit parts done and help yourself on creating that certain fursuit that you're going to want in the future. Okay, so basically, I went online and I did a little bit of research. 
Uh, so I'm going to pull this up, actually. Give me a second here. And I know it's very stupid. It's very plain. And it's, it's, it's a wiki how. And to tell you the truth, sometimes wiki hows are very, very informative. And I saw this and I was like, well, you know, that, that's, kind of, that's kind of informative on what I'm talking about. So let me just switch the camera here to boop. Okay. So I'm on WikiHow right now. And what you're going to notice is how to make a persona or slash persona. Now, I know, again, very basic. You know, this is WikiHow. So somebody put the time and effort to actually do this. So thanks to that person who put the time and effort into doing it. Okay, so... Uh, it's basically with a human. Okay, so I, I could sum up this. I read it. It's basically a human, but a furry. It's anthropomorphic. And, and that's what a first stone is. It's obviously anthropomorphic. I can go into a whole entire thing about anthropology. And I'm not really going to because I, I'm not an uh, anthrop anthropologist. So I'm not really going to get onto the figures of this. So really, do you have to follow this, the key? No, you don't. I created my persona by a dream. I, I've, I had dashing in my dream and I was like, boy, that'd be a really good character. So doing all this research and figuring out what animal you like the most, really it's your favorite animal. You can, you can do it as your favorite animal or you can do it as the one that you ad, ad, identify as, or, you know, there's, there's a whole bunch of ways to get your persona. Um, and, that's the one thing that I, I do have to say is that there's a hundred ways to get your persona. So if this doesn't apply to you, you're not, you're not in trouble or anything or, or something stupid like that. So, uh, I'm just keeping it simple here. Uh, you can do it birds with any feathers, uh, horses, goats, skunks, stuff like that. I've seen sharks out there. I've seen all of it. So, you, you don't really have to have it as a mammal or anything like that. You can have it as anything you want. I've seen killer whales out there. There's a guy who has a killer well, which I think is great. So um, you can mix it together, mix an animal, use a fancy creation uh, up in your own. You can also do base off of a plant or a machine, not necessarily an animal, which that's basically what I'm trying to say here. Uh and stuff like that. Uh, think of a design of your persona. Uh, like a color coat of making it. Okay, so um, now I, I want to kind of e expand on this color coat too. Is uh, color coats can become very complicated. And, and this is where it becomes hard for a fursuit maker to actually pull off all these color schemes. So... When you're creating a fursona, okay, let me let me just pull pull away from this for like two seconds here. Uh, let me minus that, and then I've got two screens going, so bear with me. Um, let me just I've got so much stuff here. I have a whole new setup, so I'm trying to get used to it. Don't blame me. Blame my uh, science or whatever you want to call it. So okay, no, I didn't want that. Rotten. Okay, wait, no, I did want that. Okay, never mind. Okay, so, sorry, guys. So, here, here's what it is, okay? Uh, whenever you're making a, a fursuit or um, a fursona, right? This is your creation. So, let's just start out with that. Well, and what I want to sum up with that one is, is that since it's a your own setup, you can create it with the most craziest color scheme that you want. You can have polka dot reds and greens and blues and yellows and then then like splash it in some neon pink. Okay, you could do this. And that would be great looking. I, I probably would improve because I really like bright colors. Bright colors of me are my, my favorite. Uh, but you also have to think of it from this point of view too is when you're getting this fursuit made, let's say if you're like, okay, this character set, I have enough money now, I'm gonna go get a fursuit, okay? The more colors they have, the more expensive it's gonna get, 
if you're buying your own, I mean, if you're buying a fursuit. Now, if you're making it, then you go all hog wild as long as you have the money and creativity. Go for it, champ. But I'm just saying this from a point of view of, I did used to have like a bunch of colors on my fursona. My God, did I have so many colors on my fursona. I had like blue, green, red, and all this. And I looked at it and I was looking at the prices on like, like if you want to create certain designs or, or anything like that, it's going to bump up the price and it becomes a problem because creativity does kind of have a money tag on it. And I hate saying that. I really do. I, I honestly, God, hate saying that creativity has a money price on it. And sometimes it does. Like if you're going to get a whole new fursuit, it, it totally does. Uh, if you're getting a rev sheet and your rev sheet's like completely uh, kind of scrambled and it looks like, you know, uh, I don't know, the Holy Bible and, and you're and you're going, what the heck's this? It's so it's confusing. And see, a lot of times artists will be forgiving with this. Uh, it will, they'll go, okay, you can have that. Uh, I'm just going to have to charge you an extra $5 or extra 10 which is great. But then you think about it and then you're like, maybe the first suitor is going to charge me a little bit more if I have that in there. So, and it kind of staples creativity and I hate that. I hate that with a passion, but, uh, but picking your colors should be, uh, number one, you should have colors that you like to look at or you think other people or I mean like your favorite colors, basically, as I'm trying to say. Your favorite colors should be on your fursona. Unless if you, you you look at them and they like don't mash together, then change it. That's fine. You could do that too. Because there's been plenty of times I, I've made at least three fursonas. And one of them was terrible looking. It was like all my favorite colors is put into one. And it looked like it went through a machine that was awful. Uh, number two, uh, my second one went great. It was gray blue but it was hard for me to really like grasp onto them. And I wanted a fursuit and then dashing came along and then I had the dream and everything like that. So kind of got lucked out because I think if I would have the other one, it would have been terrible. And I don't think it would have been terrible, but I want to make them maybe in the whatever. Okay. So basically what my advice to you, is keep the colors simple. And if you want to do a little bit of flair, go for it, you know, don't add too much. You don't want too much on your body. I mean, uh, at one point I was thinking of having mirrors on my paws and I was, I, I don't know where I came up with this idea, but my God, I thought it was a good idea. Everybody else around me is like, nope, that's not good. So basically keep it simple. Don't flare it up too much. Um, and then again, keep it simple. And then if you want to flare it, flare it. No problem with that. Because this is your design, after all. But I'm just giving you a little bit of tips on what I saw as a person who's created a persona, went through the whole process and making the fursuits and stuff like that. I don't want to tell you a life story. I'm just trying to give you advice. Okay, so uh, let's continue on. And uh, let's let's get off the colors for a little bit here. Uh, let me just, sorry again, new setup. I'm trying to figure out all of the wang dang doodles. Okay, so... Uh, think of a sp uh, specific details that you would like in your fursona. Do you wear a collar? Well, I mean, that's kind of an outright, uh, is it noteworthy interests do fursuiters have? Feral, quarters, and stuff like that. So details, and like I said before, details can come later. Uh, when you first start out with your fursona, you... you in my opinion, you want to create it simple and then get details as you go along in the process. Uh, the collar can come from your very first con and you know, you're like, okay, I, I want a collar on my fursona now. So everything is going to change by that. Um, now the, the, the problem with, I think some people who create these fursonas is that they overthink it. They go, my God, this is a good idea. This is a good idea. This is a good idea. And then whenever they really get into it and they look back about like, I'd say a month later and I'm, then you're thinking, 
well, you know, I just got all this artwork done with them, with all this gear, but now I think it's kind of too much. So keep it simple. Add it as you go along. If you really like it, then you keep it. Because, again, you don't want to over mash it and then go, I don't like it as much as it would. So, and that's, we'll get to all this stuff. We're going to cover all of this persona stuff. Uh, come up with the details that make your your persona number sketch out an animal like this can help decorate a persona. Okay, so basically, um, if you if you can't draw like me, I always hire, hire an artist. Uh, I have real big problems on art. I do. I'm not gonna lie. I suck at art. Art and me do not get along. So. That's where you can go and you can definitely get uh, some fursuit creators or uh, artists to draw on your behalf. There's people out there who will discuss a plan with you and they'll go, what do you want for the back? And then she'll give her own suggestions on how you can make it better. Um, or you can even do the second route of actually asking a friend for help. And see what they have to say about it. You know, give them, give them some sort of sketch. So let me, uh, I have a thing here. Let me just go to it here if I can find it. Uh, right here. Okay. So I basically have this right here, which I should have probably <laughs> looked at it better. But here's what, here's what this is. It's a rough sheet. It's a simple to honest to God, easy ref sheet that anybody can do. It's for dogs, canines, even if you're a cat. It's just a good base to get started. So what you're going to do here, and this is what I did when I was doing it. I just did it in paint and I just, you know, made it look official and seen where I want to do. So since this is the outline of your body, you can always just, you know, start it as this blank solid color and then start getting creative as you go along like when I started my persona and I know I had him in a dream I really didn't see a lot of him I don't even remember the dream as much as I thought I did but I just remember his face but I just went whole yellow basically and then I started to add green in some different places like the nose the eyes uh, I made a little circle here and you know, try to make it look like the way I wanted to do. And in specific details that made my character stand out. And, you know, my character stands out because he's so dang bright. You know, I go down a fur convention and stuff. And again, I, that's just my character. It could be anything you want. And, and this is really the basis of it. Is it could be anything you want. If you don't want it a certain way and you don't have to listen to anybody, you can just do it your own way. But I'm just giving, I'm just telling you right now, if you make it too fancy and you try to create a fursuit out of it, they might reject it because they think, oh, wow, that's too much colors for me to handle or, or there's too much stuff going on here. So just helpful advice in the future. So let me, uh, let me go back to my, dashing good looks here and then let me do this here the setup is awful right now and i just need to fix it and start tweaking it okay so let's see if we have any comments here so far uh did my fursona on google pics okay well, that works uh howdy okay no uh you're searching pacific for dogs uh oh so damn bright sun okay so here's Here's what I'm going to tell you right now is okay. So you got the colors. Let's just say you got the colors in and you, you really are thinking, what am I supposed to name this guy? I had, I didn't have a hard time with my name because again, it was locked by luck, but names can be very difficult in any sort of persona because Name, number one, people like unique names. Uh, I had a friend who actually, you know, chose the name Cyber 
and thought she was all clever about it. Like, huh, nobody's going to know that name. And then she turned around and like, oh, there's like 30 different cybers. And it's like, shoot, my name was just, I, I thought it would be unique. So before, before you get off the britches here and think your name's the most unique thing out there, uh, do, do research on it. Uh, what, what I mean by research is by like looking on Furfinity. Furfinity is a good place. A lot of personas are there. A lot of different things are there. So before you pick a name, go on there, search for the name. If it comes up, then nine chances out of 10, there's going to be another first suitor with the same exact name. And if you want to be unique, you know, you can do that. Or if you like the name, then go for it. Uh, now also too, uh, just because it looks yellow and I've seen some people do this and it's kind of like a jump impulse and learning from experience type thing that you just become a furry and you're like, my God, I, I, I want to create a fursona. Uh, it's going to be yellow, green, and blue, and I'm going to call it Yelly. And you're like, Yelly, are you sure that's a good name? Oh, yeah, I'm sure. 100%. Okay, so think of the name long because you're going to want it to make it last for you. That's why a lot of, my opinion, I think that's why a lot of people go through like eight different personas because they go, well, you know, I can't get into the name anymore. The, the name is not there. The colors aren't there. And everything just looks awful on it. And see... That that's one of the things that's that's going to happen in your travels of creating a persona. You're gonna you're gonna get kind of annoyed because you're like the colors are there but the name's not or the the name's there but the colors aren't. So just just relax and think about it. You got all the time in the world to think about it. You, it's not like you're getting under pressure here. So in my advice and and my travels of doing it. Uh, and, and from experience, like I, I've had a character named Weathers and I was like, Oh, that's a great name. Fantastic name. And then I realized that I was kind of like, meh, wasn't really a big fan of the name. So meh. And that's, again, I think that's why so many people create so many different personas because it's so hard to keep track. But for me, it's so hard to keep track on one, but we'll, we'll talk about multiple personas still in this video. And we'll and we'll go from there. So let's let's go back to the wiki how. And again, I don't, I know I'm using wiki how, and I'm kind of like just cheating. And you can go ahead and scar me or, or anything like that. But I I think it's a great. And hold on, let me just flip flop this again. Okay, so here we go. Um. Four, describe the aberration of your fursona's personality. Okay, so let's, let me just read a little bit of it. I mean, personality is one of those things that I shouldn't really have to talk about. But, I mean, it's it's a good thing to talk about because it's, it's one of those things that makes your character can stand out. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. Let me just go to this first. Uh, if you're... If you only making this persona have a responsibility to yourself and animals and subs okay, so let me just sum this up. I, I read it. I, I suck at reading out loud, so sorry, dyslexia. But what it's trying to say is is it has traits, and you're gonna create a persona around these traits. So it could be either happy, sad, disappointed, uh suicidal I don't think it, I don't think that'd be a good fursona but I've never seen it but you could do it around that base and it's kind of sad don't do that I would not recommend doing that but it's one of those things that when you're creating a personality it's supposed to it doesn't have to be about you uh, a lot of people take these and they like to escape their regular lives of being a nervous wreck or being shy or anything like this. So this is what I'm going to tell you about the traits is 
be any trait you want to be. If you are really shy in real life and you want to be the charismatic, awesome person, do it. Just do it, you know, and, and you can do it. I mean, that's technically what I do. I'm surprised I even do these live streams. I get so nervous about everything in life. So let me just switch to my regular face and we'll talk more about this personality. This personality traits and still, dang it, I can't see the cursor. Okay, there it is. Okay. So a personality is basically your own personality. It could be your own. It could be a unique personality. Uh, and, and these personalities sometimes make the suit better uh, or even the fursona better. You know, uh, a perfect example is Blue. Uh, I don't know if you ever seen Blue the Husky. I don't know if anybody's heard of him. I, actually, I think probably a lot of people heard of Blue the Husky. But the only reason why he is so popular and, and he's so amazing is because of his personality. His personality is bubbly. He's, you know, friendly, outgoing. You know, he'll always smile, give you a hug. And that's the kind of personality people are attracted to. So if you want to be like that, you go ahead. You can be like that. Or you can be like, uh, I know that there's drama llama out there that's like, you know, all, all he does is complain and how life is awful and, and stuff like that and whatever. So what, what you're going to want to do is create a personality that fits you and, well, again, it fits you and you want to do it. So it's one of those complicated things because it's from different to different people. When I'm at a con, I'm very happy. Uh, I, I try to, I can't socialize out of suit, but I can socialize in suit. D Dashing is a very sociable person in suit. He could go up to talk to anyone. He can go up to a wall and be like, hey, how's it going? So the, the, one, the one thing I wish in real life I had that, but in my suit, I'm a whole different person. So your persona can be a whole different person. And you don't have to be nervous about it. Don't, don't even like think, well, you know, I'm not this at all. I'm just going to be that one fursuiter that sits in the corner. <sighs> no, don't do that. Be anybody you want and go for it. You know, and it's one of those things that a personality sometimes makes the suit and makes the fursona. And that's what you need. You need that type of edge to get, you know, you smile, you smiling. It, it's your character. I mean, you do whatever you need to do and make you make yourself smile while you're doing it. So don't, don't worry if it doesn't seem fit to everybody else. It's what you think. It's your decision, not theirs. If nobody else likes it, who cares? So, uh, with that, um, we're going to take a second to, uh, say, please like, and subscribe to my channel. If you're watching, if you're liking this video, this live stream, and you know, somebody who really needs to help with their fursona, send it to them, you know, maybe it can help them out too. Uh, you know, cause there's a lot of new furries coming in and there's a lot of new things. This whole entire segment is basically my. Uh, introducing to the furry fandom and then later I'm going to be talking about more in-depth things about hot topics and and other things like that and uh, th that's why I'm just making the videos right now it's this is basically my series of getting started in the furry fandom so don't worry if you if you already know what a fur fur sona is there will be more contact and I will do more things so I'm also having a guest on next week hopefully Crossing my fingers. Okay. Now, so you, you pick the personality. And, you know, my my general rule for the personality, too, should be something that you can do. Uh, if you are a person who, you know, let's say your first singer is a great dancer. 
and you can't dance, I'd probably not recommend your first suitor is a great dancer. Even if in your first suit, everybody's like, oh, look at him. He's a great dancer, obviously. He's dancing in his first suit. But probably not the greatest idea. Nobody wants to get knocked out and everything like that. So personalities can change too. So if you're, if you're not in love with the one personality, try a different one. If you don't like that one, try a different one. And again, it's all prefer, uh, preference, the, the person who's creating it. And that that's my tip to you. Because Dashing started out as a confident person. And now I'm kind of like, I'm still confident, but I'm not like, you know, overconfident. I was way overconfident there for a while. Uh, who knows? Maybe I'll go back. I don't know. I'm a weirdo. I'm, I'm very confident. Sometimes I can be confident. Okay, so let me uh, get back to the Wikipedia. And again, oh uh, yeah, you can score me in the score me in the uh, uh, comments below because I'm using Wikipedia. And again, I got a new setup, so don't mind me if I'm looking over here. It's my other computer. Uh, I can tend to see better on this computer. That's why I'm looking over here. So don't 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 get mad if I'm not looking at you, beautiful. Okay, so. Let's uh, go to here. Let's go to Wikipedia. And let's, let's dive into the five of this. Thinking of the name of your fursona. My God, is this. I, I said it earlier, but this is the true statement. Naming your fursona can be the hardest thing you've ever done. And why I'm saying this is is because it's not only got to fit the character, it's got to sound good to you too. So, you know, most fur personas aren't easy like, oh, well, Mr. Husky. It's like, I'm a Husky, it's a Husky, I'm just going to name him Mr. Husky. Well, it gets a little bit more complicated because why it gets more complicated is, number one, whenever you're picking out that name, it's going to last you. It has to last you. You can't be constantly switching name to name to name. Because if everybody is trying to look for you under one A-list. And then they try to go to another one. it's They're not going to talk to you. Because they're going to go, who are you? Oh, oh, you're the other guy? Oh, well, I didn't know that. I mean, so this has got to last you. The name. So this is probably the toughest part about it. Out of all these five I've showed you, this is the toughest part about creating a fursona. And so let me just read you what they say. Uh, this could be your own name, which you could do it your own name. And again, there's plenty of people who do that. Like there's a guy named Steve, uh, Steve Dog, which I thought was hilarious because I was calling him, what's up, dog? Uh, but that's beside the point. Uh, or you can pick a name that you found interesting. Uh, so that goes along the categories of, you know, if you wanted a different name and stuff. That's that's how mine was. I saw dashing as interesting and stuff like that. Uh, nobody can claim a fursona name. So you can't really go, hey, that's my name, rather dashing. How dare you steal it? So don't don't get the idea that you're you're the only one with this name. Uh, so don't feel personable, uh, name if you don't want it to, uh, throw some troubles coming up with names, feel free to search through baby names. No, don't do that because it, it, here's the problem with searching through baby names and Wiki, and wiki how just screwed this up majorly is that. It might not fit your character. A human name might not fit your character. If I had a human name for dashing, like let's say it was just regular old Dan, I don't think that would work. Uh, my personal opinion, I don't think that would work. So I wouldn't really search to the baby names. Uh, search for something that's very unique to your character. Uh, it could be the colors. could be the personality that we talked about. It could be... The uh, design of it, you know, like if it's stripes, then you name it Stripey or something. It it can, I usually base it off my fursuit. So I looked at it. It was very bright. He was very, you know, something. So I was like, okay, 
It has to be dashing. It's bright. There you go. Solved. So, uh, thinking of words or even... Uh, think of words or even words in other languages, which a lot of people do that. A lot of people go with the Japanese route. Um, a lot of people help do the Japanese route. There's some fur furries, and I feel so bad that I do not know what their name is because it's like Nakahako or, or 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 some other Japanese name or or some like name I can't pronounce and. Technic it's technically not my fault because I have dyslexia and I have a problem reading as it is. So if you throw a, a, a name at me, then I'm not going to recognize it. I'm probably not going to recognize it, but you can name it after that. Like Kiba. Kiba is not from this language. It's from another. So there you go. You solved the problem. Uh, so uh, have someone reference your character and ask for comments for help. So... I'm going to tell you right now, uh, let me just switch over. Sorry again, new, new setup, kind of wishing I didn't set it up, but I had to. Uh, so basically here, whenever, oh, sorry. Oh, hey TJ, if you're going by dashing, where did Hedgehog Goalie come from? Oh, well, um, sorry, I... I, I wanted to read the comments too. I felt bad that I didn't. Uh, actually, what how Hedgehog Goalie came up was I was a huge fan of Sonic the Hedgehog. And number two, I was a goalie for my old high school team. Uh, well, junior high, high school, whatever you want to call it. And I was a goalie. So I was like, well, there you go, Hedgehog Goalie. And <laughs> yeah. Now that I look back on it, that was going to be one of my first sonos, but then I looked at it and I thought, Hedgehog Goalie. That really doesn't ring off the tongue. I couldn't imagine myself having that name now as Hedgehog Goalie because people would be like, are you a goalie or are you a hedgehog? So that's where I got Hedgehog Goalie from. Uh, it was a very long time ago, so don't put it against me. I was still learning the furry fandom. And again, and that's that's exactly where the name comes in. That's why the name's so tough. Because you you think to yourself, and it sounds good to you, but it's not going to sound good to everybody else. If if I come up with a name of uh, uh, Ginger Ginger Boy Two or or Ginger Fox Two, and you know, I might think that's awesome, like Hedgehog Goalie, but. Not other people are going to really roll, roll off the tongue and people are going to go, well, I don't know. That name's just a little bit new. That's why I always say, ask a friend. Uh, if, if you think your name's way too complicated and you really don't know if it's going to fit, ask a friend, see what they have to say, and then maybe you can figure out a name going forward. So don't, don't be alarmed. Names are both, again, they are difficult. So you're not the only one out there taking three hours or four hours going, I can't, I can't, I can't think of a name for this person or this persona. So don't get frustrated. Keep going. You're going to, you're going to get the name eventually. So, uh, some things I want to, I want, I want to talk about. I mean, we, we got the five, the top five of it but also there's other things that you got to be considered to um besides that list and everything like that the name and everything on that list is very important but you also got to consider uh if you do get a suit okay uh you got to first figure does the name fit the suit Okay, and I, I had a buddy who had this problem that where he thought the fursona was great and everything, but whenever he got the suit, he's like, it doesn't fit it perfectly. So, again, it's just, it, it's so hard to talk about this because it's all p personal preferences. That's what it is. Personal preferences. So, if I'm... If I'm uh, making a fursuit right now, 
or making a fursona. Let's just say I'm making a fursona. And, you know, I don't like the name. I shouldn't use it. Just because my friend wants me to use it does not mean I should use it. So, I'm just trying to get that out of the way. I got hair. Ugh, I got fur in my mouth. But, just keep that in mind. This is your project. Don't, just because somebody makes a suggestion doesn't mean you have to take it. So, popularity is not a thing when it comes to your persona. But, if you are liking this video, and you're saying, boy, I think somebody could really use this to make a persona, then invite them in. Be all, all means. Just invite them in. <sighs> okay, so, still got it. I still got fur in my mouth. It's actually quite really annoying. It's like right there on my lips. <clears throat> okay, sorry. Sorry about that. Okay. This isn't coughing up a hairball with stashing Foxy. So, okay, now you made your fursona, and now you're making the observation that you want to make a second fursona. Second fursonas can be very difficult to keep uh, in the loop. Um, unless if you're a multitasker, and by all means, there is a lot of multitasking furs out there who have about eight different personas. They have eight different, uh, eight different personas and they have eight different fursuits and they're all fursuits and, and they wear them proudly. And I still got this thing in my mouth and, uh, I can't get it out. I can't, it is virtually impossible. It's just stuck right there. I feel really stupid, but whatever. Um, so if you have eight personas, the more personas, the more headaches you might be getting. And it just, again, it depends on you. If you think you can do it and you could tackle two fursuiters, go ahead. And there's plenty of people who do it. Look at Tilt Longtail. He has probably about four fursuits. And each one he wears all the time. So... I'm not going to say that it's not possible, but if you do something like that, just, it's going to be a little bit difficult. So you can have two fursonas. Now I know that there's actually a per, a couple in Virginia who has two fursonas, but what they do is they made it where the, since they're like twins, it's kind of like the same exact one, but they can both wear it. And I think that's a great idea. Uh, if you're looking for two or more fursonas and you want to get a fursuit for it, uh, I would recommend on trying somebody else's, like somebody who doesn't wear a fursuit that much or they can let you borrow a fursuit and then change from fursuit to fursuit and see if you like it. Because... I don't think you want to spend $3,000 for something that's sitting in the closet or, or $1,000 on a partial that you're like, dude, man, I, you know, I got this fursuit, but I like my other one better than I like this one, which becomes a problem because you just spent a lot of money on that one fursona. So, um, now another, another tip that I'm going to tell you is there's a lot of people who go out there and they go like, oh, you could donate this character, donate that character. How about you uh, take home this character? Do I recommend them? No, I, I do not recommend, what is it, adoptions? I don't recommend them at all. And here's why. Because number one, somebody's making money off of this. Some Somebody who is literally sitting at their computer, putting a bunch of things together, coming up with a name. They're like, Oh, well it's on donation. Whatever. Cool. I just made, I just made 10 bucks on that. No, don't do that. Be creative. You want to, you want this character to be yours. And as yours, you can be proud to say, well, I came up with design. I came up with all the, the things and I, I really made it nice neat, organized, and I did it how I wanted to do it. So donations to me are kind of a waste of time. Uh, so I would stay away from that poll 
And if you do want to do it, you go ahead. But I'm just saying that you can create something ten times better on your own your own time. So that's what I would do. Definitely recommend doing your own and doing this. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna dive into a little bit more of these couple of these five traits that we talked about uh, on Wiki and. Also, too, I'm going to show you some demonstrations of different ones that were created. Sadly, I don't have a reference sheet for mine. I never created a reference sheet for mine. I just have a whole bunch of badges. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I mean, I, I guess it's a bad thing, but it also can be a good thing, I guess. Okay, so let me just uh, switch the camera over to here. We're going we're gonna to dive a little bit more since I just basically gave a rough thing. And then I'm going to take your phone calls a little bit later. Uh, and about when it hits the one hour mark, I'm going to take your phone calls. And we're going we're gonna to start talking. And you can call in and ask about a certain thing here. Okay. So diving into this a little bit more on the creating a species to become a fur, uh, fursona. Okay, so I'm going to tell you right now, you do not, again, do not need to be a mammal. You, you do not. I, I have seen ant fursonas. I have seen shark fursonas. I have seen uh, really crazy hybrids like bats with other things. You can even be a pig. There's a pig out there. I know that there's a pig out there. I've, I've seen them. So... Uh, this whole entire stereo, I don't know if it's a stereotype, but this whole entire emotion that you just have to be one of those, like, mammals, kind of not true. Birds, birds too. Birds is a good, birds is a good example because birds, there's a lot more birds out there now than there ever was. So, you don't just have to be a mammal and you can basically do any character base that you want. If you want to be a kangaroo mixed with a uh, uh, dumb beetle, go ahead. You enjoy, you enjoy yourself because it's all about creation. And that's the one thing I love about this thing. So let me, uh, I, I had an example, but I accidentally deleted it. So I feel like a total idiot right now. So bear with me. I, I have to Google it. I had this one that was just crazy. But I'm going to show you some uh, ref sheets. And again, I had them on here, but I didn't save it. And I reset my computer. So this is my fault. So uh, oh, I just hate when I do this. Okay, so let me go to personas. And then I did ref sheets. Again, I had them all in here. Okay, so let me... Let me give you a perfect example of a ref sheet. Now, whenever you're doing a ref sheet too, keep in mind guys, that you can do it like this, that where it's on all fours. Uh, I know a lot of fursuiters who like the design of all fours. And that doesn't mean if you get a fursuit, you're gonna have to be on all fours. I would definitely not recommend on being all fours because your fursuiter would get very messy. So this is a perfect example of one because it shows the the bottom half. It shows the top half. As you can tell, she had little dots on there, so it showed them. And it shows the tongue. Uh, now, tongues can be very important if you have a lot of, you know, let's say if you're getting a fursuit maker that has a tongue and she can make a tongue for you. becomes very important for the tongue. Uh uh, she has antlers and she gives all the, all the details too. As you can tell, she gives like, uh, uh, comes with flowers upon them. So it gives more depth. This, I would give an A on the, uh, ref sheet on this because it shows everything that you need. Uh, and whenever you're doing a fursuit or anything like that, this is what a fursuit maker is going to want. She is going to want it to be this detailed. 
Hopefully it is still... Oh, shoot. My fault. Did I... Yeah. What? That was weird. I don't know. This... Titan... Okay. Whatever. But this one is a perfect example. Hopefully you saw it before. And I wasn't just showing uh, uh, myself. Which, if I was showing myself, my God, am I stupid. So, this is a perfect one. It has all the examples. It has everything that you need. And this is what fursuiters, makers really look for uh, and if you are a fursuit maker this is how I would do it because it shows everything it shows that there's a little bit of yellow in their teeth it shows that if there is maker, there is a whole bunch of different things and that's what I would go for you want to go for this okay now I had it in a terrible one this one right here I give it maybe like a C plus because it really doesn't give a lot of detail uh let me just try to find one that's like really good and okay like this one i like this one because it's straight and to the point it's just like the ref sheet but it's not really the ref sheet because the person just they didn't have the colors and everything i would apply a color sheet because colors can get very confusing for first furries and like fursuit makers and everything so I would definitely recommend a color sheet but here here's why I like it it's simple you get to see the front you get to see the back except for that hand which I I hate that that really annoys me if I can't see this hand then if I'm a fursuit maker maybe the paw's the other color but I guess it's not because it has the same exact thing but I give this about a B uh, but this is your standard one this is what a lot of people create because it's so simple to design. It's literally just facing front, sideways, and back. And fursuit makers can go off this, but in my opinion, you're going to want it a little bit more detailed. And you're going to be wanting it. You're just going to want to be in more detailed because the fursuit maker is not going to know what your color of your tongue is. Uh, she can ask you, but sorry. Let's just say that she doesn't ask you and she creates a green tongue and you're like, oh, well, it's not supposed to be green. Well, then it's kind of your own fault because you didn't create a good enough fresh sheet. But in the same aspect, that's what I would do. Keep an eye on the ref sheets. And if you are getting a one made by an artist or somebody that you really like, uh, add a little bit more details to it. And that's all I have to say about that. Because rough sheets can come in many different shapes and sizes. As you see, a lot of different things here. Um, so, that's what I would go for if you're doing rough sheets and everything. Let me change back to my wonderful face. And I, oh shoot, can't see the cursor. Okay, let's go back to here. And let's go back to here, see my wonderful face. So, that's basically... Uh, some examples of different types of ref sheets and and that's what you're gonna want you're gonna want a good ref sheet uh, and that's it's really important really really important if you create a good ref sheet so you have a basic good time with their design and if you get a fursuit maker to make it they'll know exactly pin and points on where you want colors and where you want different things uh, and again your fursona might change like 30 times it's bound to happen uh, I know I've been saying this throughout the video but it's bound to happen your fursona is going to change later because you're gonna go well I could make an improvement here and I could make an improvement there and everything so just to let you know if you're liking this please like subscribe and Share around to your friends. Let's see if we can get some more people in here. I'm going to be taking phone calls in exactly like two minutes. So we're going to open this call line. We're going to get some callers in here. Get some tips on some fursuits, hopefully. And other, I mean, first fursonas and stuff like that. So why I'm doing that, let me, before we continue on with that, uh, let me go back to Wikipedia, which again, I'm sorry, I can't. I've got a new setup again. Don't, don't, don't scar me. 
Uh, so let me do this here. Okay, so let me uh, put here. Okay, so now uh, the I showed you the persona, and I forgot to go to back to the wiki page. My fault. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more depth about one, one or two more things that I find very important. If I can find my cursor again, I'm in fursuit, so it's really hard looking for my cursor. So okay, so okay now uh, another thing that I want to really go into detail on is uh, I was talking earlier about how you don't want to make your character too crazy in color coats and you don't want to make your character basically have all the bells and whistles on it and stuff like that uh, and here's why on that uh, number one for suit makers sometimes they're very hard to please and I don't want to say like all oh, the first suit makers are the worst no it's kind of a design problem. If you have too many design patterns on your fursona, it could be very hard to translate that into a, a fursuit. Now, you're probably wondering, uh, well, you know, I'm sure they can do it or whatever. Right amount of money, right? Not all the time. Uh, I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, my friend or my roommate, uh, he actually created a duck. The very first time he, he ever made a fursona, it was a duck. So he went to Mixed Candy and he was like, you know what? I have my heart set on a duck. I want to be a duck. She came back to him uh, about a couple, like actually, I think a year or two later and basically said this. I don't know how to make a duck and I can't make the feathers and all the knickknacks that you created. So that's one example of why some fursuiters can't do everything that your heart desires. And I know it sucks. I, I know it sucks because you want to have that, that awesome color wheel with some X's in it and some blue dots and some whatever. First, fursuit makers can't do everything every time. So don't. Don't like get discouraged. Don't say, oh, well, now this ruins my whole creativity. It's not that. It's a simple fact that it's just hard to do. And if you're creating a fursona and you, you know you're going to be creating a fursona for this, it's going to be hard to do. Now, the, the piercings, the tattoos, the patches and stuff like that, that can all be said. Uh, what, what I would probably go with patches, you know, like you see these paw patches on there and you see all these different patches. And again, creativity has some cost to it. And I, I hate saying that again, I said it earlier and I'm going to say it again. Creativity has some problems because it costs money to be more creative. If I come up with a whole entire different creative too, it's going to tack on that bill for an extra three, 400 because creativity goes with more work. And that's, that's one of those things that I, you can argue with me going, Daniel, these, these I mean, dashing these first sonas are, you know, I mean, these first suit makers are making hundreds, uh, two hundred thousands of dollars a year. Well, they're doing that because they're working for you. They're, they're putting your design into a character, I mean, into a fursuit that you're going to love. It takes time. So with creativity comes more money. And I hate saying that. I hate it. I hate creativity and money being the same exact thing because they do not mix. They do not. So just giving you a heads up there, the more patches and the more things you have, the more your fursuit is going to cost. And... I would hate to see that down the road that you don't, you're like 300 bucks short because you didn't have that. And I would hate to see that. 
And I actually know a couple of people who had that happen that where they were 300, $400 short. So their first suit went, you know, bye bye into somebody else. So not, and most first suit makers will work with you. Uh, let's see special details, which that basically goes with the details too. Um, does your character, does your fursona have to have a backstory? About how he fought a war in 1982 and was like punched in the throat. No, uh, backstories are optional. Uh, and the only reason why I say this is because I, I've seen some really like thought out backstories. And they're very good, but it's optional. You don't have to have a backstory for your persona. So that I'm surprised that's not on this list because this is such a generic list that... But it, it's a very it's a very helpful list because it can get you thinking about more things and it got me thinking about a lot more things too that you know it's like well I can expand on this so let me switch back to my wonderful face uh, I know it's not I know you know it probably makes you laugh I know I'm dashing but you know let's see I need to find again new system whatever okay so now that you've got everything like that, okay, uh, let's see if we have any comments down here and we can uh, see if we have anybody here. Uh, nope, no comments, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open the phone lines now. Uh, I have my phone on. As you can tell, my phone is on. It's tuning into me because I was just checking to see if everything was good. Um, so my phone number is 717 839 3684 that is 717-839-3684 and you can go in talk about some crazy designs you've had with your fursona you can call in and talk about you know how do I get a fursona started or anything that you want to give another tip for uh, on creating a fursona you could talk about anything and everything goes okay so uh, I'll even, somebody can write that phone number again. It, it, it does, if you can't understand me, I know I can barely understand me half the time. So here's what, here's also what uh, it means to whenever you're doing this and you're creating the persona um, and you want an artist that's really good. Uh, that's another thing too. If you want it art done for it, it's going to cost a little bit of money. Uh, I was looking on some different furry websites. Uh, actually, I wonder, well, actually I can't really show them because I was, I was looking at them and there was some stuff on there I don't want to see. But if you want a good rap sheet, it's about 40 bucks. If you want like a basic, good, not really too many detailed rap sheets, you're going to be paying about 40 bucks. And that's fine. Forty dollars is good. I think forty dollars is an average scale. And then if you want like what that one person had that had all the writing, all the identification, and all this other stuff, is it's gonna cost you a little bit more. So you're gonna go into like seventy buck territory if you want like a lot a lot more details. It's like seventy to a hundred. I've seen ref sheets go up to like close to 150 because how many details they have in it you know so but I think a good ref sheet in my personal opinion is a ref sheet that keeps it simple to the point to where you're not going to get confused on everything so and I know I get confused uh, if, if I have if my perfect ref sheet would be this, because I suck at names, so I number one, I'd have the the name on like the 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 top like with this big of letters, because I suck at names, and if I don't, if it doesn't stand out in my mind, I'm not gonna remember it. Like I feel so bad for that one caller. He, I was calling him, you know, but whatever. So what you're gonna want to do is number one, if you're doing a ref sheet, you're gonna want to keep it simple. Ah. Uh, not too much details, but enough that where people are going to get through. And if a fursuit maker is looking at it, it will be fine. 
Uh, number two, you're going to want a fursuit artist. I mean, a fursuit person, which they can. There is fursuit design. I mean, fur, not, I can't speak right now. It's fursona designers. They actually have those. If you actually look it up, there's a lot of different fursuit designers that will help you out and say, hey, this person right here, you know, uh, I see you got pink polka dots. I, I think it'd be better in blue. And then you can go, oh, you know what? I think that's right. Because it's always good to have that second opinion and that best friend sitting in a chair next to you going, oh, this, that doesn't really look right. And then it gives you the second thought of maybe, oh, well, you know what? Maybe you're right. That doesn't look right at all. Like the mirrors. I had mirrors. One, nine, oh, nine, okay. So two, we six, have zero, a phone five, caller. Zero, one, oh, look six. at that. Hello. Well, hey, bashing. It's Ken Bono again. Oh, yes. You're the only guy who calls into this show. I wish more people would be like you. You're a great guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what's your question? Oh, well, I was actually really just going to comment. Uh, once again, uh, your um, subject is really timely for uh, what uh, I've been doing and my whole experience uh uh, what's the thing, you know, as a, as you know, I'm shooting the documentary, at least uh, trying to, <laughs> getting a lot of um, really con footage and that sort of thing. I want to finish with the uh, interview portion, you know, as I, I think I mentioned before. Uh, but um, as far as uh, coming up with the persona that I came up with, that was a pretty uh, interesting and practical kind of progression of events that happened with that. Yeah, at first I was going to uh, dress up as a, uh, a pre pre-licensed character. It was, I, I had selected uh, Professor Genki from, uh, I believe, uh, what game was, oh, Saints Row. <laughs> I don't know if you know that's a mm. character, but it's an interesting character if you want to look him up and uh, look at that. Uh, what was Because it? I figured for the, what was that? Oh, sorry. What was the what was the person that you were going to be? Uh, you're you're going to be. Uh, uh, sorry. Yeah, it was a character named uh, Professor Genki. Oh. Uh, he's a a character in Saints Row. Okay. So. And really, my big reason for choosing him was because uh, you know the head was big enough that I could fit a camera in it. <laughs> that was my that was the main reason that I chose it. Uh, but. Um, then going into production and uh, doing uh, the research for the processes that I would have to do to shoot this thing, you find out that uh, you're going to have to pay some sort of uh, licensing fees to use that character, you know, particularly if you uh, ever want to release the film anywhere where it would actually get seen. So yeah. it made it more practical to try and create a character. Well, to, to tell you the truth, I, I agree with you 100% um, that yeah. you don't want a licensed That's character uh, because yeah. of the simple fact that it might cause conflict uh, because if you're in a video or something and somebody wants to monetize it and they use free stuff, then they'll go, oh, wow, now it's not free because of the simple fact that you are... Uh, you're using a licensed character. Uh, so I agree with you 100%. Don't use a licensed character. It's a very good tip. I would I would really recommend that oh, yeah. for anybody. Sure. So Plus it's just more advisable and it's a lot more fun to just try to create your own. You know, it was a it was kind of an interesting process coming up to with uh, Genbolo. At first I wanted uh, uh, to try the uh, name Genta Fox because I had heard it somewhere and I thought it... Uh, might be a lot more uh, applicable, but uh, not just going on uh, for affinity, but uh, Google and quite a few sites, I've found out that uh, Genta is painfully common in the world. <laughs> it's just apparently a, a, a legendary mythic type uh, name for a fox that started off in Japan, so it's extremely popular. Well, I mean... So I was like, well, I want to... Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and that, that's the one thing that I, I always try to tell people, that you're not going to pick out that most. You'll think it's original until later down the road, then you'll go, oh, shoot, there's like three of them, you know. Um, right. 
Because I know that there's another dashing. When I heard there was another dashing, I was kind of disappointed and uh, <laughs> kind of upset about the whole entire thing. But, it, I mean, it happens. It's not going to be the end of the world and yeah. everything like that. Um, but but as for the licensing, uh, yeah, don't don't use, like, Nick Wilde. Um, and I know it sucks because there's some people out there who like to use Robin Hood. And there's a lot of people who like to use different things. But it, it sucks because the license license thing puts into play. Sorry. Uh, my roommate's here. But, uh, now, oh, no, no. yeah, he's he's a little bit angry at me right now because I forgot to yeah, pick. Yeah, because you left 30 laundry everywhere. You I, got, uh, things in the I know, I know. That but can we can here. we talk about this after my live stream? Thank you. But, can you clean up, please? but, uh, sorry, I was, I was a bad fox. But, now, um, but yeah, I'm just saying that that's a really good tip. And yeah, um, anything else you want to add uh, to this thing? Uh, are you are oh, you? No. Gonna, oh wait, let me ask a question. Sorry, uh, are you going to be adding like yeah. personas to your documentary? Are you going to be like, what is a persona and everything like that? Yeah, uh, that's that is a good question. I'm looking for ways to. Um, Add a little more uh, exposition, you know. I, I do. I have a planned, uh, like a little time lapse thing for you know how I built the head and all that sort of thing. I don't think the arms would be all that uh, interesting, <laughs> but uh, I want to have a the time lapse video of the head and maybe a little um, short uh, exposition about um, coming up with the character because you know again it was really for practical reasons and something that I thought that kind of pop with the subject matter that I'm covering. Okay. I kind of make it a little more interesting without making it about me because, you know, you're, you're being a documentary, you want it to be about your uh, subjects, which is going to be like other cosplayers or other fursuiters, you know, who are uh, fascinating and, you know, much more worth following. Okay. So, uh, very interesting. Um for that and yeah I, I hope I hope it I hope it works out for you I hope it does 100% so yeah I appreciate it and I'll keep tabs on you I mean you always call into the show and you usually do really good on that so you're probably the only one I know who calls into the show and I can actually have a conversation with because it's really hard going hours upon hours of not talking to anyone so okay well <laughs> Well, uh, thank you. I really appreciate it. Uh, anything else that you want to talk about? Oh, that's it. You know, I just uh, hope that's hope those tips are kind of helpful for people. You know, as far as uh, coming up with a good character, and uh, you know, other than that, have a dashing night. <laughs> okay. Okay. Have a have a dashing night, and I hope I hope you have a great day. And I'll probably hear from you again soon. Uh, probably next week. Yeah, more if, than likely. If if I have. Yeah. Okay, again next week. <laughs> yeah, if I have call in, I think I'm going to have a guest on and stuff. So. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, well, I'll talk to you later. Okay, have a good evening. Bye. Bye. Okay, well that that was very interesting. Um. Just one of those things that that a, a lot of people overlook too is that you know it. License issues can become a problem if you have a character that has a license involved. So definitely don't like create a Nick Wilde anytime soon. Even if you really like him, don't create a Nick Wilde. Um, unless if you want to create it yourself, like that one guy did, you go for it. Because you can't sell any marketing by that. So very good point. Uh, if you want to call in, I think I'm going to end the show a little bit early too because I'm not feeling all that well. Uh, and it sucks because I, I really like doing this show. Um, so if, if you want to, if you want to, you know, do that. So let's see if we have any other questions in the comments here. 
Uh, is there a lot of aces out there? Yes, there's a lot of aces. If you Google it and you do other things, check to see if there's a lot of aces. I'm sure there is. Uh, I want to change the first name to another before. Would you recommend me doing that? Well, it depends. It depends. If you have a lot of friends with Ace, uh, like I said earlier, uh, it, Twitter is probably one of the biggest things that somebody could change a name and, you know, they could be like, well, I don't know this person. So just be very careful on changing names. If you've had it for at least a couple years, definitely don't recommend it. If, if you just had it for about a year or two, uh, maybe it would be, you could do it. So just be careful on changing the names because it might, you know, whatever. So uh, other, other than that, um, I'll give people to call in another five minutes. Uh, we'll see if anybody out there who wants to talk. Uh, the number again is one one seven one seven eight three nine thirty six eighty four. That's one seven one seven eight three nine thirty six eighty four. So if you want to call in, give me your intake on it. Very good caller there. He uh, said about the licensed characters, and I totally one hundred percent agree with that, uh, and everything like that. So uh, another thing about personas. And I know I've been saying about how it's your character. It is your character. It really is. It's nobody else's but yours. So if somebody doesn't like it, too bad, too sad. You like it. It's, it goes over everything. Uh, so, yes, everything like that. And really, I, th I think I, I talked about every topic I wanted to really cover today. Um, so again, you can call in, have a good time, whatever. Um, but I, I think I'm going to end the show here very soon. I, again, haven't really, I came into a roommate who was really pissed off at me, I guess. So I guess it happens. Can't really get mad at that. I was a lazy fox. Uh, that's what happens when you have one day off. But so going to end the show here. Sadly, but so short. Again, not feeling well. So, uh, yeah, personas. Uh, the last thing I want to say uh, before I go. Sorry, it's very short. But I, I would like to say that personas should be your own. It shouldn't be anybody else's. Uh, don't do it because you think it's going to become popular. Uh, like fursuits. Don't, if you make a fursuit, don't get the first suit maker because you know it will be popular and everything like that. And yeah, just do that. So uh, this has been Talking with Dashing Foxy. Uh, if you've liked this and you want to see it again, again, it will be in DVR. Next week, I'm hopefully going to have a guest. So if you are interested in a guest, I will definitely do it. Uh, and yeah, if you have any future comments or, or if you want me to do something that you think would be very interesting to do, I have my email down below. So you can always email me. So email me, telegram me. I have the telegram group in the bottom and everything like that. So please like, subscribe, uh, and share around to your friends. If they don't have a fursona, give them to this friend. Maybe it will help him understand what personas are and maybe it will help him get along with it too. So thank you for watching. This has been Talking with Dashing Foxy and I hope you have a wonderful night. Bye. Thank you for watching. It's going to take me a little bit longer to get over here because of the stupid cursor and new system format. Hold on. Oh, where's the cursor? This is really tough. Okay.